Welcome to another episode of NCIX Tech Tips. I'm Linus, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to put like a sweet baller machine into a very, very, very small form factor with the Sugo SG09 from Silverstone. We are going to put a high powered gaming rig with a thousand watt power supply and GTX 680 graphics card into an MATX enclosure. <laughs> Now that you see the case itself without the box that it came in, I think you can begin to grasp how, grasp how impressive it is that all this stuff is going to fit inside it, particularly the 1000 watt power supply. Now we are using sort of voodoo magic to make that happen. This guy right here. This is the PP05 short cable set for Silverstone Strider series power supplies. This will make cable management much easier inside this small case. The first step for me is always to install the CPU and the RAM on the motherboard outside of the case. In this case, we've got a very high performance Gigabyte Sniper M3 motherboard. We're installing a 3570K, which is perfectly optimized for gaming. Remember guys, Sniper level board, okay, G1 series board. We are gonna be able to overclock on this machine, no problem. We're also going to then install our Patriot Extreme Masters Edition memory. We got 16 gigs of RAM, although we could easily install up to 32 gigs of memory on this platform without any issues. HEO1 heatsink we've chosen is quick to install and has an extremely secure mounting mechanism. You just install the bracket from the back, the extremely solid steel hold down plate on the top is simple to put together if you follow the instructions. And one trick, guys, is when you're putting the heatsink down on the CPU, leave the small tower over your memory so you have lots of room for your memory, even if it's tall, to have clearance so you can install up to 32 gigs of RAM in this machine. Now the motherboard we chose for a couple of reasons. Number one is because it's a G1 series board, it's got all those overclocking features. Number two is that like most G1 series boards, it has excellent onboard audio because we're gonna fill up all these PCI Express slots and we're not gonna have room for a dedicated sound card. Now we're actually ready to start building in the case which has a very unique internal layout. You can see the power supply actually goes at the front at the top. So we're gonna start with the IO shield the same way we always do. Put that guy in there. Then we're going to install our motherboard standoffs, any that are missing that are required for the board that we happen to be using. In this case, we only needed one extra one. And finally, we can screw down the motherboard. Before we'll have room to install the motherboard, we need to remove the power supply cage from the case itself because the very large heatsink that we have installed will prevent it from going in until we've taken that out. So you can see it's on little sliders there. Once we remove that, it gives us a lot more room to work with to put in the motherboard. Before screwing down the motherboard, or while you still have room because the heatsink's not installed yet, you're gonna wanna route your four or eight pin connector to make sure that you actually have room to install it. Because once the heatsink goes back in there, you can see things get pretty tight in that area. Once you've plugged the CPU fan header into the motherboard, it's time to put the fan in and we are seriously reducing the amount of room that we have to work around the CPU socket area. So if there's anything you've forgotten up till this point that looks like it needs to be plugged in there, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure you get that done now before we do any more cable routing. There are included rubber grommets that you can use for noise isolation with the fan. So just go ahead and put those between the fan itself and the fins of the heat sink. There are a couple different ways to install the power supply. So you can see there's a cutout here, but the front of the case also has a filtered intake that would be very free flowing as well. So you can either install the power supply with the fan facing the front of the case or the other way around. I would recommend going this way with the fan facing the front of the case because that way you don't have to compromise any of the airflow that's going to the rest of the components in your system for the sake of cooling your power supply. So it won't be contributing as much to the overall heat inside your case. Screw in the three screws and then slide it back into place. It's getting real now. I haven't shown you guys the storage expansion options of this particular chassis. You can put two three and a half inch drives here or up to two, two or four rather, two and a half inch drives below. 
up to six drives are actually supported if you can get the cable routing figured out. Now, we're just going to do two SSDs in RAID 0 for our baller MATX machine. So we're just going to take off two of these brackets, position the SSDs with the connectors. So they're, they're, they're stomach to stomach, so to speak. So the connectors aren't quite aligned, which is going to make it easier to plug things in. I think my personal recommendation for this case would be stick to two two and a half and two three and a half inch drives because it gives you some extra room where those other two and a half inch drives would go to manage the cables that go into them. So we're using our short cable kit again, which has now saved our bacon twice, to wire these in without much excess slack. We're using straight connectors to the backs of the drives and then straight connectors to the motherboard on the other side of this division. I think I also wouldn't really recommend installing that 80 millimeter fan down in the bottom that's optional because that again gives you some more room for cable management as well. So both SSDs are plugged into a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second connection. Installing the slimline optical drive is actually very simple. It's a toolless process, so you just slide it into place. Well, okay, not quite toolless. It's toolless up until the point where you have to screw this thing in. So there you go. Put that into place, put these two screws in here, and you're ready to go. These slimline opticals use a special connector. So you plug that guy in. This one came with it. This is a Silverstone optical drive. Plug that in, then you run a Molex to the back where you're going to do all your cable management and run the SATA data cable down to one of your SATA 2 ports on the motherboard. With reckless abandon, we have removed all of the PCI Express slots and it is time to install dual GTX 680s and SLI into this machine. So we will see if I can handle doing this in real time here. Two 680s. Dun dun dun. Now you can see just how full this case is with this crazy of a config. Once we close it up though, I'm going to show you guys how the side panel design helps make things a little bit cooler for those cards. Tricky part here guys, the wire from this clip holding on the fan is actually touching the back of the top card, so we're going to take a small non-conductive piece of plastic and slide it in between those so that we won't run into any issues. Then, next thing we're going to do is plug power into all of these bad boys because we are pretty much ready to fire this baby up. This is mostly just for scale, guys. I mean, check this out. SLI GTX 680s, 3570K, 16 gig, up to 32 gigs of RAM, up to six drives, between the technology in Gigabyte's G1 Sniper M3, the fact that Intel's new CPUs are so power efficient and so powerful, and the engineering that went into this case to fit dual GTX 680s in here, this is just a marvel of com custom computer awesomeness, in my personal opinion, which is of course unbiased. Now, getting to the part where I said how we're going to get airflow to these graphics cards, because they're right next to each other and there's obviously no airflow coming into the case except up here, right here. This side panel has a built-in fan that has a built-in grill. It's an air penetrator, so it's designed for pressure. It's going to push air into the intakes on those graphics cards. Then they will exhaust them directly out of the case at the back. So we're going to fire this baby up and see what kind of temperatures we get. We put on our SLI bridge and we're pretty much done. Now there are still a couple things that we could have done to make this even more balls to the walls. We could have put a couple more 120 millimeter fans on either side of this cooler. Okay, Air penetrators, for example, are great heatsink fans. We could have put two 80 millimeter fans here and here as well as that optional fan place that I showed you in the back to get more airflow to the video card but I think because we're using reference cards we should still do okay. If I was using something like a Windforce or a Twin Frozer or a DirectCU2 cooler I might opt to go with those additional 80 millimeter fans and of course the things that can make your life easier. These are CPO7 cables, these are short SATA cables, we had some short ones lying around so if you don't have the benefit of having that you can grab a couple of those and I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get the PPO5 short cable kit for the Strider power supply. If we'd had to contend with uh, like a full length 24 pin ATX connector in here, I mean we would have not had a lot of room left for airflow, which is incredibly important in a chassis like this. Color me impressed guys, this chassis does a fantastic job of keeping things cool and it's very quiet. We even have that top fan at the low setting on the switch on the back. We're running 
four, uh, rather eight instances of Prime 95 small FFT to load the CPU. We're running Furmark to load the GPU. Our GPU temperature maxes out at 84 degrees and our CPU temperature maxes out at 57, 58 degrees on the hottest core. This system is not only ready to do whatever it does at stock settings, it is ready for some overclocking if those temperatures are to be believed, which I believe that they are. Check this out. Microphone. Holy crap. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. I'm Linus. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.